I think Kevin broke the ice a little bit tonight. It's springtime, and it's a time of love and romance and all those kinds of wonderful things. So I thought that perhaps this would be a good opportunity to follow up Kevin's work with some of the words from the best loved poems of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis as linked and introduced by Caroline Kennedy. And it's a wonderful poems. And one thing about the Kennedy presidency, I always felt, is it introduced some elegance, I think, to the Oval Office, that they brought a certain flair to it, perhaps partially because of her French background, partially because of the Kennedy's academic nature, but it did introduce something of that, and this particular book is broken into different sections, and this particular part is on romance and love. But she goes on to say at the beginning of it, Caroline talking about her mother, Jacqueline, my mother was a true romantic. She lived her life on a dramatic scale and responded to poetry of love with a passionate intensity. Lord Byron and Sir Walter Raleigh were two poets she admired. Both were men of action and letters. Both were adventurous and noblemen. Raleigh was a pirate, explorer, and natural scientist, imprisoned by a jealous queen. Byron, a freedom fighter and romantic hero. One of my mother's favorite White House events was an evening of Elizabethan poetry and music featuring the actor Basil Rathbone. She worked hard on every detail of the evening, evening, choosing the music to be played on Elizabethan instruments and overruling the Congress of Library and other Shakespearean scholars to make sure that her favorite poems were included in the program. I have, loaded, I have loaded it with love sonnets, she wrote in the triumphant memo, discussing the pros and cons of various passages. I have included her favorites of the poems that were read that night. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? The passionate shepherd to his love, to which Raleigh wrote a reply, which I will go on with those two particular poems, which were really two of my favorite, the, the way they, they respond to each other. And others that she suggested, like, is this the face that launched a thousand ships? I think we're so familiar with the wonderful historic poems. Sometimes poems like this can seem old fashioned. The language is complex, the flowery style at odds with modern life and changing roles of men and women. But if you do not make, if you do make the effort, you will find that the emotions these poems, poets express are not far or far away, but ones that all of us have felt for those we love. So we'll begin with piece, The Passionate Shepherd to His Love by Christopher Marlowe, followed by the reply. Come live with me and be my love, and we shall all the pleasures prove that hills and valleys, dales and fields, or woods or steepy mountains yields. And we will sit upon the rocks and see the shepherds feed their flocks. By shallow river to those falls, melodious birds sing mandigrals. And I will make thee beds of roses and a thousand fragrant posies a cap of flowers and a kirtle, embroidered all with leaves of myrtle. A gown made of the finest wool, which from our pretty lamb we pull. For your lined slippers for the cold, with buckles of the purest gold. A belt of straw and ivy buds, with coral clasped and amber studs. And if these pictures may thee move, come live with me and be my love. The shepherd waits, swans shall dance and sing. For thy delight each May morning. If these delights thy mind may move, then live with me and be my love. That is the introduction. That's what Christopher Marlowe says. Well, that's followed by what I consider to be a delightful reply, and it's called Her Reply, which is written by Sir Walter Raleigh. And he comes out with a slightly different, jaded, realistic point of view. And his reply is If all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, these pretty pleasures might be moved to live with thee and be thy love. But time drives flocks from field to field, when rivers rage and rocks grow cold, and Felamon becometh dumb, the rest complain of cares to come. The flowers do fade, and some would feel and wanton fields to wayward winter reckoning yields. A honey tongue, a heart of gall, Fancy spring, but sorrows fall. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy bed of roses, thy cap, thy kirtle, and thy posy, soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, to folly ripe and reason rotten. Thy belt of straw and ivy buds, 